Hey, this is Ken from Maker's Box. Today I want to show you how to uh, make the TARDIS kit. Uh, I've been working on this one for a while. It's basically a lapel pin. And uh, press the button. You can see the light fades in and out like your TARDIS is landing. So it consists of a CR2032 battery, AT Tiny85 switch, speaker, uh, tight tack clutch, and then it's got the two modes. It's got the mo one mode where it'll uh, fade in and out continuously. You can turn it on or off. And then if you hold the button down while you turn it on, it will switch modes. And you get my best impression of a 8-bit TARDIS. Alright, so let's see how easy it is to put this together. So, first thing I want to do is kind of survey what's in our kit here, make sure we got all our parts. So there's our ET Tiny, our circuit board, we've got a capacitor, battery holder, the Titac clutch. These two will save to the last, and then our speaker and our button. And of course, you always got to look in the bag and find your resistor. Okay, so I always like to start with the resistor. Resistors are don't have any polarity, so they can go in either way. They're also fairly heat tolerant, so when you're kind of like when you're making pancakes, your first one's always a little iffy. So we save that for the resistor. So then the leads down. So on the back here, you see it says 330. I'm actually shipping uh, 100 ohm uh, resistors. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Just something to limit the current, so it saves your battery a bit. Uh, pull it down flush to the board. And then I uh, kind of like display my leads out a little bit, hold in place, and you can set it flat on your work surface. Um, so I've got my trusty Hacko here with chisel tip, and I'm using um, standard tin lead solder. Um, I'm not going to make this a how to solder tutorial, but uh, basically, you get your tip nice and shiny and clean. You're holding against the lead and the pad about two seconds, and then we introduce just a little bit of solder, and you watch it soak in there, and it'll tent up if you get it the right temperature. And I'm not sure how good my camera will do at a close up, but you can see we got a pretty good joint there. And make sure it stayed where we wanted it, and then we'll solder in that second lead. And life will be glorious. Okay, and then I've got my favorite uh, flush cuts here, also from Hacko. These are about six bucks on DigiKey, and I love them to death. So we're going to cut our leads off as close as possible. This kit was kind of designed to be ornamental so uh, I've got all the components on the back and we're trying to keep the front as clean as possible. Let's see, so next up now that we've got our soldering iron up temperature and everything, let's put this AT Tiny in. Now, this is obviously the most critical component. Um, it does have a, a polarity and you can see a little dot indicates pin 1 and then on your circuit board here there's a kind of a divot that shows the pin 1 end of the chip and uh, I generally, so these are pre-programmed, I generally uh, bend the leads in a little bit for you if you have a stock chip they're going to be splayed out a little bit and you have to bend them and we'll just slide it into position there and again, this is critical, that pin 1, if you don't get that right, uh, it'll actually overheat because it'll draw so much current if he's going backwards. And, of course, they don't function. So, um, we're actually going to check that third time here before we put everything in. But on a, on a multi-lead component, I like soldering in two leads first just to give me a chance to double check. So, we'll hit that one. And then we'll come over here and hit pin one. So pin one on a on a footprint on a circuit board is usually a square pad. So that's another clue for you. 
Okay, so now we're flipping it over, and again, we're making sure our pin 1 is matching the pin 1 end. And then check to see that it's fairly flush with the board. And so I like that, so we'll go ahead and finish it up. So, yeah, once um, you solder more than two pins, then it gets exponentially harder to uh, unsolder and, and correct your mistakes. So. I'll be very careful about that. And okay. Let them down closer. They're all pretty much the same height to the board, so it doesn't really matter too much. Let's put our speaker in. This is kind of low. These come in uh, cut strips, um, and I've had, if you pull this paper off, you can actually pull the leads out. So I generally, you can either un untape it and pull it out, or I can just clip it here. It's probably the safest thing to do. Don't want a straight component. Um, so piezo speaker. Is marked here. It doesn't have a polarity. Sometimes they do. Uh, the ones I sell from TDK don't. So let's go right in. And we'll see if we can. So if you're new to soldering, there's a number of videos online that are uh, very good and show the close up parts much better than I can with this setup here. Uh, I particularly like the one from Colin uh, from Adafruit does a good one, and then there's uh, Carrie from Geek Girls is a good one. So. All right, speakers in. Yeah, this is a nice and easy kit. This is going quick. So let's do our uh, our capacitor. This is a 0.1 uh, microfarad. Again, I'm just going to clip the leads to avoid having to pull it. And this is basically uh, kind of a power smoothing. Uh, as you turn these LEDs on and off really quickly, it jostles the power levels a little bit. And this kind of smooths it out and keeps your AT tiny happy. Um, circuit will generally work without them, but it's just, just good practice to have a capacitor on your circuit. And uh, the Ceramic capacitors like that do not have a polarity. The larger um, electrolytic capacitors uh, will, and they'll have markings on them that'll show you. So this one can go anyway, and you can see it seats right next to the chip there. Tuck it in. They usually design those to be as close to the component they're trying to help out, so it goes as close to the AT tiny as possible. Um, our switch now is going to go here, and you can see we got markings for on and off. So it does have a uh, orientation. You can put it in backwards, and it will still work. Um, it'll just be a little awkward. I like it pointing to the outside, so it's easier if you have this on your uh, wearing it like a pen. Then it makes it easier to turn it on and off, and then it's recessed just enough to where it doesn't catch. And it's actually a dual pull, dual throw, but we're only using it as a single pull, single throw for turning power on and off. I just happen to like it because it's so uh, compact and it's, it's flush to the board. And you can see it just tucks right next to the AT Tiny there. Kind of, you know, when you're wearing wearing these uh, as pens, kind of worried about them snagging on things or laying flush. So, I think this is a good package. And again, you saw how multi lead components, so I checked it before I soldered in. And that one just sticks out a little bit, so you can. Um, nibble it off if you want. You can also come in later and um, uh, reheat the joints, add a little solder and kind of round them off. That's not really uh, 
recommended practice for soldering, but for something ornamental like this, it might make it look a little better. Okay, so now we're down to just, let's put our LED in here, and this, like the uh, chip, is pretty critical, because you got to get in the right way or it's not going to work. And the clues I gave you on the circuit board here is there's a plus sign um, next to the pad. Both pads are round, so that doesn't help you out, but so... On an LED, the uh, long lead is the positive, or the anode, and the short lead the cathode, and of course I always like to have a battery, because I can never remember, it's so the uh, coin cell battery is the big flat side, and you can pump that in. And so the other thing you can see here is a 3 volt battery, and we're, we're blasting that through our LED, and it works just fine, and that, that's because the uh, lithium cells have an internal uh, resistance so that they don't, uh, if you just hook this up to 3 volts of uh, D, raw DC power, it might blow out your LED. Of course, uh, a white LED has a higher forward voltage. Yeah, now I think about it, it's about 3 volts forward voltage, so this works out great. So you really, bottom line is you don't need a resistor in your circuit. We're just using it as a current limiter so that, um, uh, so that your battery lasts longer. Okay, so long lead, positive. And I think you could go in either way on this and have it work out, but um, yeah, in fact, uh, on mine, I did it through the front. So either way, as long as you got the long lead through the positive, yeah, I think we're going to go through the back on this one. And of course, on a silk screen, uh, generally the component will have the silk screen on the side you have, so I think this is probably the better way to do it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bend it over um, so that it points upwards like that. Yeah, now that I do that, I think that's the right way to do that, because it's then the LED body is kind of matching everything else here. So let's double check again. Long lead is in positive. Um, it's possible uh, to use, uh, to unsolder a component like that, but an LED is kind of sensitive to, to the temperature, so the less futzing you do with it, the more likely you are not to damage it. So. We're going to solder one lead in. We're going to double check. So that's not quite like I want it. So we're just going to reheat that lead and kind of tuck it in there. And that's more like what I was thinking about. So it's sitting right on the board. I'll give it some stability. And then we'll solder that second lead in there and it will be nice and tight and lovely. pretty good. So we've got all our components in except for our battery holder and our Titac thing. So now the battery holder, uh, these come in two kinds. There's a through hole and a surface mount. And I decided on this one just to kind of keep the front clean. I will go for surface mount and hopefully that's not going to scare you too much because this is really pretty easy surface mount component. Um, I uh, I've got some other kits that are all surface mounts, so they're kind of, kind of fun to do. I'm getting used to it and enjoy doing it, so I'm going to throw a little solder on there, a little solder on there, and so the problem with soldering these big components, and this happens with the through hole too, is it's nothing but a big old uh, heat sink. It's a radiator, so uh, with your soldering being all about getting temperatures, to the right temperature. So, and, and this has a divot on the end the battery slides into. It has these metal tabs that stop it. So we're going to have that pointed downwards. If you put this in backwards, you're not going to be able to get your battery in and we'll be sad. So the divot faces downward and that's kind of hard to see on the silk. So I'm going to hold it in here and get it the way I want. And that's kind of a two-step process. One is just kind of tack it in place and then the other one's kind of come in and really solder it. So I'm coming down, I'm touching right in between the two leads. I've got the pad. I can feel it kind of sink down in so I know the solder's melted. And then additionally to being like the heat sink, you got to wait just a little bit because uh, it's got the heat needs to dissipate to make the solder so it'll, it'll be fluid for a little bit. And so you can see I did get it flat, and if I look at the orientation, it's pretty close. A lot of times you got to wiggle around a little bit to get it the way you want it. 
And so now that it's tacked in place, I'm going to come in here and kind of the same trick here, and you'll see it kind of sink down in, and then I'll add a little bit so that once the heat's up on top of the pads, we'll get it good, because this is as much about being a mechanical joint as it is a, um electrical joint. And I probably got a little more solder than I needed, but you can see it's covering the tops of the pads, and that's going to hold it in place. Then we'll swing back around. This one's just kind of tacked. It'll come loose if it drops or hits the floor, so we'll add just a hair more. And I'm going to hold it down, make sure. Alright, and with that, we should have a working circuit. So, make sure our switch is off slide our battery in and then we will turn it on and you can see we got so starting in the silent mode and then if we want to hear the sound make sure that speakers we're going to hold that and this is just a resistive uh, contact pad and there's that so we're good to go and again if I mentioned so if this is not working um, and like if you got this chip in backwards this is going to heat up really quickly so you need to get the battery out or turn it off as quick as you can um, and then you'll have to resolder that chip which would probably be a whole nother video so hopefully you didn't do that I've done that so many times I, I've lost count but um, so that's the one thing to check the second most common problem would probably be the LED in backwards that's much easier to fix and then of course you always check make sure your battery is uh, uh, got a good charge on it and then um, uh, just go through and double check all your solder joints see if you have got a cold joint so I mean I'm looking at my switches here and a couple of these look pretty suspicious for cold joints didn't quite get enough solder in there it's hard for me because I'm behind the camera here to see exactly what's going on alright and so and then finally we've got this little pad here for our lapel pin or I think these are technically Titac clutch pins. So I'm going to lean in a nice blob of solder. Now these come with a little metal uh, tab on them or a claw. And I'm not sure the exact purpose of that, but we don't need that. So we're going to clip it right off with our flush cuts. Of course, you're wearing your safety glasses that so shoot into your eye. Okay, so you're going to need something to hold this. You can't do it by hand because it heats up so quickly. So I've got my trusty little needle nose here. Tweezers work as well. And then uh, my general method of attack on this is to heat that pad back up, get the solder kind of liquid, and then kind of introduce your pin and then the trick is you can't get your pin up to temperature too and then kind of slide it in place and this is not this is probably the hardest part of this project to increase but um, keep the heat on there slide in the middle a little heat on top and there it is. And then again, we're going to have to let it cool down just a second because we put a lot of heat into there. And then once it has solidified, you can kind of sometimes I'll get a cold joint and it'll snap right off. So you can tell we got a pretty good joint there. And then that'll go on your um, thing. And so we are good to go.